Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hey guys, welcome to a new video here today and we are so fortunate to have Brother Elias here to join us. Brother Elias was previously a Buddhist before he came to embrace Islam. So today's topic will be about how he from Buddhism came to embrace Islam. And uh, Brother Elias also has his own YouTube channel. Do check it out. It's called Elias Tan, I-L-Y-A-S-T-A-N, where he shares his journey through Islam and the knowledge that he gathered along the way. Yes, and for those who, people that's watching on my channel and do not know who he is, his name is Harold of Daos. He also has a YouTube channel and he talks about his journey to Islam and also um, interview and talk to people about their journey to Islam. So if you guys are interested, check him out. Um, I will link his channel in the video description below. S-H-A-H-E-R-A-L-D, Shaharul. Yeah, so without much further ado, let's get Brother Elias to share an intro about himself. Yeah, so um, my name is Elias, I'm a 26-year-old male and I converted to Islam <laughs> or reverted to Islam uh, close to a year ago, um, last year, March. I think in the middle of March, la. so it, it's been a, a while, um, also I've learned many things along the way and I used to be a Buddhist last time before I actually learned about Islam and subsequently became a Muslim. And I was a Buddhist, not by choice, but it was more like my parents are Buddhist. So I was brought up um, with like the teachings about Buddhism and some of the simple practices about Buddhism. I We don't do much and don't practice much um, last time. Um, the simple things that we do are just going to the temple and you know, there is some um, Buddhist festival that we celebrate. And there is also like burning of hell notes on the seventh month, which is also known as the Hungry Ghost Festival. Other than that, um, we don't do much. And that is why I grew up not knowing much about <laughs> what I was taught last time also. La. So, um, curious, what is the hell notes about? So, the hell notes basically, right, um, is uh, <laughs> it's like bank notes, but it is meant for hell. La. So, oh. <laughs> people burn it um, um, in hopes that these um, hell notes... Okay, if I'm not wrong, uh -huh, at least from my understanding, people burn it in the hopes that this money will reach to their loved ones in, in hell. So, uh, we believe that there is different levels of hell also. <laughs> like, um, the, the, I think the lowest one, like, is the 18th level, you know, the basement 18, like, I think some people might have heard of that. Mm. Yeah, so if, like, people who. That's the worst. Uh, of the people go to the lowest Correct. Right? People who do the worst things will go to the lowest one. Oh, okay. I think the money is harder to reach down there. La. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, in terms of gods when you worship, right? What was the... In, I mean, the Buddhists, I believe they have different gods also, right? Correct, correct. I think there is many different ones. There's like uh, the, the Buddha itself. Like some people pray to that. Um, there's also like Kuan Yin. It's like a female, I guess, goddess. And then there is also many other ones. I think some um, people also have like kitchen god, like Tua Pei Kong, you know, like yeah. the, uh, the different different ones. If I'm not wrong, again, yeah. the, the kitchen god is basically to bring restaurant business uh, upright, to help with restaurant business. Correct, correct, correct. And, and they have also the Quan Kong, right? Yeah. The god of war or something. Correct, correct. Call it. And then there is, I'm not sure if this is Buddhism, but there's, you know, sometimes you go to shops, you see the, the cat that's waving the hand. That is also a god. <laughs> not a god. But, <laughs> but I'm not sure if it's related. Because like, okay. uh, a lot of Chinese people use that to like... Um, bring luck. Bring like... Weave people in like... To, oh. the, to the shop. Yeah, that's oh, what okay. they believe in. Like the cat will like... You know like... Weave people and... Make the them Chinese word is Zhao Cai Mao. La. Yeah, Zhao Cai Mao. It's right. to catch... Catch luck, right? Catch the wealth. Yeah. The wealth, right. Catch the customer's money. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> catch my money. Okay. <laughs> so... Um, other than all those things, uh, the simple, simple practices that we do, I don't really practice much. And my understanding of Buddhism is also not a lot. I only have basic understanding such as um, in Buddhism, there's, at least from what I was taught, there is this reincarnation concept. Like if you do bad things, you will come, you will come back in the next life as like a, a cat. Or like, but cats are good. <laughs> They're so cute. <laughs> you maybe not cats, yeah? maybe grasshopper. Yeah, grasshopper. Grasshopper also good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, maybe not animal. Maybe some animals that are you know scary, maybe. Moth. Moth. Okay, moth. Yeah, maybe. Because um I don't know if you know like or is it ha happened to only to Buddhists, but sometimes my mom would say that um like when there's a moth in the house, there's a huge moth 
like at the wall, then they will say like, oh, don't don't kill it or don't disturb it. This is like one of your great grandparents or your relatives that come and visit you. So it's a, a bit weird. Um, that's also where I, you know, start to have um, disagreements uh, with the understanding about um, Buddhism or at least from what I was taught because I the concept of reincarnation just doesn't make that whole lot of sense to me because um, there's a lot of people that commit sins nowadays, right? Mm-hmm. And as sin, the number of sins are growing, mm-hmm. uh, more and more people should reincarnate not as humans but as animals mm-hmm. instead. But then the world population is still growing at a very quick, fast rate. So, and animal population is actually kind of decreasing. Correct. They're going extinct just out there. Correct. So that also doesn't make sense to me. And what also doesn't make sense to me is like, who is the one that determines who goes into like hell? And who is the one that determines who reincarnates into an animal? And so there is like conflicting things are like, um, whether or not like, oh, do they go to hell or do they become an animal? So like, you know, there's this, this kind of mismatch. Other than that, I also don't really believe in the burning of hell notes thing because um, it's just a practice that it, it also doesn't make sense to me because like, how can I burn the money and then someone in the hell receive it? And why is it only for hell? You know, like, why why do we think that all of our relatives go to hell? Like, why is there no one that goes to heaven or whatever? So um, this concept doesn't make that much of a sense to me. And that is why... Um, I was more like a Buddhist by name rather than a practicing uh, Buddhist. So you're just like following your parents' footstep and uh, kind of tradition and culture and customary that you yeah, doing correct, those practices. Correct. It became more like a culture thing uh, rather mm. than a religion. Like, oh, the time comes, seven months, and we just burn the thing. That's it. We, we mm-hmm. don't really have prayers or anything. Like, mm. We also rarely go to the mosque. Hey, not mosque. <laughs> <laughs> we never went to the mosque before. We, we rarely go to the temple. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, yeah. My side of the family, at least for my mom's side, they practice burning of the hell notes as well. So that's where I also couldn't wrap my head around why, you know, certain practices are done as well. And therefore, I was just going with the flow as well at the time. Oh, well, last time you also burned hell notes. I mean, as a as a Catholic Christian, we don't have an issue with oh. with doing certain things. It's, it's more like, yeah, we, we it's more like you know we we just at that point in time when I was a Christian, I just believe in Jesus, you know, mm-hmm. and whatever your parents are doing, you you just can observe, you know. It doesn't really right, have to right. to oh. be yeah. part of your yeah. I suddenly got reminded of one thing. Like other than burning hell notes during that time, right? We also offer the food, you know, like ah. you see food on the roadside ah. for. Because the Hungry Ghost Festival, the ghosts will come out and then they will eat on the thing. So the, the fruits will be the fr- fruits or the food will be placed on the floor, and then um, some cats or animals will eat it. Some the Bangladeshis will clear it. The foreign workers lah, and some of them might even eat it. So, <laughs> so wow. it's a bit weird lah, yeah. So yeah. it's a uh, it also doesn't make sense to me. So from what you share so far, what I understand is you know these are some of the disagreements that you have with the theological aspect of Buddhism. And um, you also can't wrap your head around some of the practices that Buddhists do. So, um, have you ever thought about like you know the meaning of life, your purpose, and everything? Um, I actually only started thinking about my meaning of life when when I was in army. Before that, right, I I thought about it here and there, but I didn't really focus much on it. I I thought that um, last time I would just think that my purpose of life is just to lead a good life. And my aim was to make as much money as possible and just be successful. I think that is what a lot of people want yeah, and a lot of people aim for. Most parents also say to their yeah, children, right? just, like, study just be hard. successful, study hard and earn as much money as possible yeah, to feed your doctor. family, become a lawyer. I mean, it's not wrong to to be successful in that manner. Like you think about being a doctor or becoming a lawyer. Yeah, or yeah, it's, it's a good, it's thing, good yeah. contribution to society and it's nothing wrong to chase after success in life. But we also need to chase success in the hereafter. <laughs> correct, correct. Because um, that time, right, when I was in my army, I, I started a, a my own online business uh, selling um, apparels. Uh, I would just call it apparels. Yeah. And I I had a small success. Uh, so And that was when I, I, 
I bought my first car, right? My, my family didn't have a car. I always wanted a car because like in Singapore, right? Like mm-hmm. car is like a symbol of success because like it's expensive, right? Not a lot of people have it. And most people just take public transport. And being able to buy a car at, I think that time I was like 19 years old with my own money. After I bought the car, I was very happy. And um, only for a while, you know, like even though I always wanted to have something successful, right? Um, I had a small taste of success, um, just a small taste, and it didn't really make me happy or enjoy success that much because I would just ask myself, what's next? You know, like, what's next after this? Um, car number two or car number three but doesn't make sense, right? For those who are unaware of the pricing of cars in Singapore, it's astronomically high. <laughs> so you, it's quite amazing, you know, that he bought a Nissan at 19, 19. years old. Yeah, because I, I think, you know, to spend at least $100,000 on a car, along with the petrol and all the taxes for the road and, you know, a gantry that you go through. Yeah, correct. It's just not worth it. La. It's just not worth it, la. at least from yeah. how I felt so far. La. And through the experience, right, even just owning a, something that I always wanted, that was when I started to think about life, you know, is it just all about chasing success? Because I, I, I had a sm- small taste and it didn't make me feel that happy whatsoever. It only made me happy for a while, but then I, f- I still feel like there's something missing, you know, from, I just don't know what it is yet at that time. And I just felt that there was something missing. And after that, when I finished army, when I go to work as a, at my full-time job, I will always ask my friend that, you know, like, What's our purpose in life? Then we'll always discuss about our purpose in life. And we'll always have discussions, um, you know, like what we believe in. And some of my friends, we always had discussions that we, we believe that there is something out there that we just don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. And we believe in the unseen. Uh, we basically, we believe that there is a world of the unseen because um, the, there's many things that we cannot see. Uh. So at that point, um, I was at work. And I worked in a gaming company last time. So I played a lot of games at that time. And that was um, the start of my discovery about Islam. Oh, from gaming? Yeah, correct. Because through gaming, right, I, I, I met a lady over there in, inside a game. <laughs> the most likely places <laughs> to learn about Islam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing, right? <laughs> yeah, so um, that was where I, I met a lady. La, and then, um, you know, like we just... I just we just play games and then we just got to know each other and then we we got together and um, at that point of time I knew that she was a Muslim but I wasn't really interested in religion uh, because I always have a, a point of view that um, religion. Um, what and, game was it you play? Uh, it was Rules of Survival. Oh, that's where you met her. Correct, correct. It's like PUBG Mobile, but you have like avatars and stuff inside uh, the game. Yeah, I mean like you have a character. Yeah, just inside the game. Correct. And then it's like, you know PUBG, right? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, my, my gaming knowledge is not that high. <laughs> okay. But yeah, basically we have a character and then uh, you can talk in the game also like, to your teammates. Uh. Yeah. So um, I, I didn't believe much in religion uh, because I always believed that uh, religion... Wait, how did you know she was a Muslim? Was her character wearing hijab? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Because I know she is Indonesian, and I, 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 last time I thought Indonesian were Malays. Last time, uh-huh. and I, I knew that, uh, like, Indonesians and Mal- Malaysians, right? They are. Muslims, but can be like. Indonesian Chinese, la. Yeah, but well, she's not Chinese, la. How do you know the name? Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Correct, and I also met her in person, so I know that she's not. Oh. Okay. Uh, uh, Chinese, yeah. So, um. From then on, I I thought that we this is something that can be put aside. Like relationship doesn't have to involve religion. Last, that was my mindset last time. So I didn't really care much about it. I just thought that um, we can just um, go through with this uh, and see how things go. And then there was one day that she told me that um, I think after she spoke to her parents or her brother or something, mm-hmm. like her family, mm-hmm. and she told me that if uh, things have to be serious, I'm serious with her, then... Um, I have to become a Muslim uh, because that's yeah. the only way that her parents will accept me. If oh. not, uh, I wouldn't be able to go on further with her. So that was when I 
I had a dilemma. What should I do? And um, I just thought, okay, I just hold on a bit longer. Let's see what ha- else happens. And then um, in the meantime, you know, I, I I started to learn a bit about Islam, right? Mm-hmm. Because I think she's a really nice girl. I wouldn't want to give her, her up for that. And I, that time, I think to myself that if I were to become a Muslim, right, mm-hmm. I would just to become a Muslim by the namesake, like I'm a Muslim. But, you know, like I don't really have to do to the lifestyle, the practices. Yeah, correct. As long as I'm Muslim, then I can be referred. Then, then I'll, I'll just do that. Mm-hmm. But um, as I learn more about Islam and watch more videos, and I start to realize that um, Islam is actually, you know, a, a very logical um, religion. It, it has uh, the teachings that um, that is what I believe is true, and it also has the you know like the concept of the unseen, um, which is also what I believe in as well. I, I believe that last time, I believe that there mm. is the power of the universe mm. and everything happens for a reason, but I just don't know what's the reason. And you know, Islam has the reason, like um, it, everything happens for a reason, right? The, and everything happens with the will of God. So why, why Islam made a lot of sense to me is because um, I, I went, okay, before I went to classes, I went online to listen to a lot of Dr. Zakir Knight's lecture. Um, because he does a lot of uh, on comparative religion and he talks about how Islam has similarities with other religions. And that was the time where, you know, like I was like, wow, um, there's actually a lot of similarities with other religions and it is quite a misunderstood religion, Islam, at that point of time. So I was curious and I, I started to learn and find out more. What were your misconceptions then? Last time, my misconception about Islam was like it is only a religion for the Malay people. Um, I thought that Indonesians were also Malay people. Some of my friends also think that like Malay live in Indonesia and in Malaysia. Another one of my misconceptions is that I, I used to think that Allahu Akbar um, is, a, is a bad word. You know, like a lot of my fr- friends think that. Like when we play games, like people will just be screaming in the game Allahu Akbar, like thinking that this is a, a bad word. <laughs> oh, yeah, must be those, you no. Know? terrorist video that they show and people kind of like in, yeah. in those parts of the world they would scream crazily yeah, and correct. then it gives you that impression I guess that's yeah. how the media does it correct correct so other than that I didn't have much misconception, misconception about Islam like, I had more um, things that I didn't know about Islam like I didn't know that they had to pray five times a day you know mm-hmm. like because like we don't see um, Muslims pray right like they pray in private mostly and I also didn't know that um, like Friday prayers are, is also a compulsory thing. And I also didn't know that all five prayers in a day is compulsory. Because prayer to me last time, like prayer to me is always like if, if something good happens to you, then you go and pray in the temple like to thank the God. And if something bad happens to you, then you go to pray and hope for something bad, good to happen to you or something to remove something bad from your life. That was some of the things that, that I didn't know much about Islam. And as I started to listen to more lectures, um, it also made a lot more sense to me. Um, and that was where I started to go to um, the Muslim Converts Association of Singapore, the Darul Akam, to have uh, classes there. So I went to the Basic Islamic Express, the, the, the short one in a week one. But I go there every single day. It's two weeks, but I go there every single day. And also went for the prayer class. La. So um, through the Basic um, Islamic uh, Cause um, that was where I found out that um, it is actually a very you know beautiful religion with a lot of logical reasoning and good reasoning behind it, mm-hmm. and I think the teacher also did a great part uh, on explaining it because I think if the teacher is, is 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 bad and didn't you know have a good explanation to make me understand everything, then I I don't think I will also have um, uh-huh. that much understanding or the 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 will or determination to want to be a, a good Muslim. I would just do it for the namesake. But ultimately, I realized and found out that um, this is where I want to be. And the, the main reason, right, why I believe that Islam is the true religion, right, um, is because of the, the signs like, in, the, in the Quran. Mm-hmm. It's because of, there is so many things, like um, the Quran said like 1400 years ago that um, the universe is expanding. And now, this is just one of the examples. Uh, you know, it, it's impossible for so many 
like for someone to know th- that the universe is expanding, you know, like so many years ago. years ago. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Furthermore, like how there's an ocean where both salt water and fresh water don't mix because right. there's a barrier between them. And it's not discovered 1400 years ago, nobody has the ability to even build a ship or a boat that well to go so far in the ocean to see this. And today in modern science, we can actually see it. There's other signs like how the Quran talks about the creation of a baby in a woman's womb and all that. So 1400 years ago, nobody has a microscope, nobody has the technology to, you know, have a uh, rocket up in the sky to see how the universe is expanding. Uh, nothing at that point in time. And yet he was given this revelation from God. Yeah, correct. So this is basically what made me believe uh, is, is the is the different signs and the, mm-hmm. uh, the different different verses of the Quran that um, made me believe that this is the true religion. And compared to um, the other scriptures, I think this is the 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 true and the authentic one because there is no um, contradictions. There is um, everything is is so beautiful. Uh. Furthermore, you know, you say that you met good teachers, good Muslims around. I guess it's also how it comes all together as a, a religion of peace and love. Correct. I think I think a, a point just to add is for people who are thinking to go to Islam classes or anything, right? Initially, my impression before I went to the class was it's going to be a serious class, you know, like that it's going to be like, wow, lecture, um, lecture style, you know, like in, in, in school, mm-hmm. like, wow, it's not going to be interesting, but it's going to be very um, deep. But and very serious lah. But surprisingly, the 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 teacher was you know very light hearted, you know. It's like very funny in in a way, also in the way that he explained things and make it relatable and and funny to us and makes it easy for us to understand. So um, if people are are afraid, you know, some I was afraid, you know, at start at the start to go to to classes. Uh-huh. I don't know who I will meet, what I will learn. So I think if anyone has those fear, right, I think um, it's, um don't be worried, lah. Uh, don't, don't be worried, lah. Like, uh, at least for my kids, uh, I think maybe for yours as well. I think the teacher was all very nice. If people are afraid that the teacher is gonna be wow, you must be Muslim or what, and it doesn't happen, lah. So yeah, just just relax and uh, I think you'll have a good time in the class, lah. Correct. Also, just a quick add on is that um, you know, like I always have this mindset, or some people have this have this mindset if they go into a religious class they will get brainwashed or something. So, uh, I don't know how to say that that is not true, but I think um, just go in with an open mind, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I know where you're coming from. You're talking about, because it, in certain places, I think communities where they want to get people committed to something, right, right. they would have a lot of you know, validation that this is true. Like everyone will say this is true and this is right and they will keep telling you that you have to follow them and stuff. But, uh, you know, if that was true, there wouldn't be 1.8 billion Muslims in the world. Yeah, correct. Maybe even more. I think there's some undocumented. Undocumented. Like maybe in China, a lot of people kept um, maybe yeah. Muslims, but they... If you tell me say... 2 billion or 18, 1.8 billion people all brainwashed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, correct. Okay, so share with us about how, you know, you came to a point that you want to take Shahada. So, so basically, Shahada is the declaration of yeah. faith. Once you take it, you are Muslim. Basically, it's just what you have to do. It's just a declaration of faith that you say with your heart and accept. And right, that's right. it, you are Muslim. There's nothing like, you know, like not, not in Christian context where you have baptism and stuff. Yeah. This is just a declaration of your faith. Yeah, it's just what you say lah, and uh, what your heart believes in. So um, to back to his question on how or why I decided to do my Shahada is because um, for me, right, I'm a person that if I if I believe in something already, um, I would just, and I really want to do it, I would just do it. Uh. But what made me want to do it, right, is because um, I think for like, for the past maybe three years before I became a Muslim, I've always been thinking, you know, like ever since um, I, I bought a car at that time, like what is the meaning of life? You know, I've always been in search Sometimes not actively, sometimes passively, be in search of the the something like like this to believe in, and um, when I finally believe in something, I couldn't believe it, you know, because I I used to hate religion. I used to believe that it is all man made. I used to believe that um, 
religion is just a way for people to feel good. Lah. Like I last time right when people say um thank God for this, thank God for that, I I would like well, in my mind I'll I'll really be, you know, like like oh, triggered, you know. <laughs> for some reason. Because like I would like I'll be like, oh I mean this person, right? Mm-hmm. To me last time, like, this person, okay, you, you got this thing, it's because um you worked hard for it. Right? Like some people say, Oh, well thank God I, I got a new house or oh, finally pay off my house, you know. To me, right, at the time last time, mm-hmm. I was like, um, you work hard and that's why you, you know you you manage to get what you get, right? And everybody's success is each of their own, right? Mm-hmm. Like I'm successful or he's successful because he worked hard. Right? Based on his own efforts. Based on his own efforts, correct. And there's no like um God that made him successful. That was what I believed in. So when I actually believe that there is something out there, I actually believe that this religion is, is real. I, I also cannot believe it myself. I, I really believe in it because I've been in search for something to believe in for the past few years. And when, finally, when it came to me that um, I, I learned about Islam and found out that you know, this is what I believe in. And f- finally, that I booked my Shahada. I think people with knowledge, right? I think people will generally tend to be able to understand um, what is the true religion better. Because I think Albert Einstein, I saw one of his quotes, he said that science without religion is lame. Religion without science is blind. Basically, I think it means, right, like if, if the religion doesn't stand the test of science by scientists, then it is a blind religion. Yeah, correct. And, you know, through all these, like, the different science in the Quran, I believe that it is the true religion. Oh, ah, yeah. fascinating fact. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, see, I didn't know about Einstein's quote. Yeah. Okay, so um, afterwards, you took your shahada. Can you describe like what's your parents' reaction and you know your friends also as well? Like? Okay. Uh, so before I took my shahada, right, um, like a few months before I actually went to Islam class, I actually told my mom already that I'm going for I'm going to Islam classes. I'm going to become a Muslim soon. At that time, her reaction was uh, slightly um, angry, I guess, just slightly, because she couldn't understand why um, there are so many girls, right? Why I choose one that is Muslim. <laughs> I think my parents also think the same thing. Yeah, continue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she also said I'm young, or there's so many girls, blah blah blah, and um, so I let her know beforehand, because I know this is how she is, though. So I, I let her know months in advance, really, um, that before I go for some classes, and when I actually. Like, closer to when I'm going for Islam classes, I told her that I will be going for Islam classes. And the good thing about Darul Akam, right, is mm-hmm. that it's right below my grandma's house. Oh. So, like, I would say, oh, I'm going for Islam classes soon. Uh, it's actually near my grandma's house. So, I just quickly add one more topic to it. <laughs> just say, oh, yeah, when I go there, I'll go visit grandma also. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, so so um, once she know that I'm going for Islam classes, and since I already told her a few months back, right, mm-hmm. she already know la, that she can't change my mind la, because I'm the sort of um, kid that uh, if I am determined to do something, right, mm-hmm. and then she can't change my mind unless I give it up myself. Like, no one can influence what I want. I see. So, and since I already told her before, since um, when it's getting closer to the Shahada and when, when I'm going for Islam classes, right, like she already know like, like yeah, yeah, it's like that. Or, like you can't change really. <laughs> she accepted it. Yeah, she accepted it. So I, I did my shahada, um, like one of the days, and I just told my mom afterwards that um I, I can't eat pork anymore. I'm not eating pork anymore, you know. So and surprisingly, I think she just said, Oh, okay. Like she didn't have any like argument or anything or like getting angry. Because my mom's temper is quite bad. Oh. So uh, yeah, so that was quite a surprising thing. Uh, she just said, okay. And then for Rick, then I think the rest of the family, I think they just know just like that. Uh, like, I didn't really tell them, uh, but mm-hmm. they just know. Uh. <laughs> and for my friends, I also didn't really tell much of my friends. Only my colleagues at the point of time uh, when I was going to work. Mm-hmm. I just straight up tell them that hey, uh, next year I'm going to become a Muslim. Like that. Uh. So I think they were quite nice because uh, mm-hmm. I think we are not super close. Mm-hmm. So... Um, at that point, we were close, la, but I think we were just very open la, and they were very accepting. So, very thankful for that as well. And yeah, didn't have much of a challenge la, telling my friends or family. Correct. 
So after that, do you have any other... How's life being a Muslim after that? Muslim, being a Muslim so far, I think life has been great. <laughs> uh, it has been... Uh, it, it's good, uh, living a life with a purpose, you know. It's very different from living a life that's blind. Um, just to share a quote that I heard last time when I was doing a sales job, living a life without a purpose, right? It's like a, being a taxi driver without a passenger. You know, you're just driving around blindly, just waiting for something to happen. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. See the yeah. analogy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. At least with a passenger, you know where you start and where you end. You know, but with no passenger, you're just driving around waiting for something to happen. So mm. I think it's a very good analogy and I always stuck in my mind, you know, since then. But you know one day that journey will come to an end. Yeah, correct. Even though you're a taxi driver, right, the, right? the petrol will run out even though if you have no... <laughs> you have no you're just like waiting. Passenger. God is like, hey, when are you going to find out about your <laughs> meaning of life? <laughs> yeah, correct. So... um yeah, la, it has been very different, la, living a life with a purpose and no purpose. And challenges-wise, I didn't really face much challenges. It's only like, I think recently there was Chinese New Year that we have to meet relatives. And um, I didn't really bother telling them that I'm a Muslim. La. I think well, some of the relatives, it's like, you know, those, um, yeah, la, those those kind, la, those kind. So, <laughs> so uh, I just, yeah, I just, uh, whatever the food they offer me, I'll just say, yeah, it's okay, la, I'm full already, yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Most of, I mean, I also go through that, that part. Yes. And this explained to them, we kind of eat pork. That's all for me. <laughs> and yeah. most of the food, I would see the ingredients and say, no, no, sorry, I can't take this. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, I, I realize it's actually easier to know. If like, you tell them you're a vegetarian, then you tell them you can't eat pork. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, strange, right? Yeah. It's strange, right? Yeah. strange, but, you know, just a... But actually, being a vegetarian has much more, like, restrictions, right? Correct. Yeah, correct. because you don't eat any meat, what? <laughs> correct. You yeah. only eat rice. But, be, but if you say I'm vegetarian, people kind of get... Oh, oh. like, oh, vegetarian, vegetarian. No pork. Oh, why you don't eat pork? Like, oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, now that we've understood most of what Elias has shared about his story, I uh, hope it has benefited you. Any last words you'd like to share with, you know, our viewers out there? For our new brothers and sisters out there who are new reverts, maybe, or even those who are you know, on their journey of discovering more about Islam because they're interested in it. Um, do you have any uh, advice for them? Yeah, I think my advice will be um, a very simple advice, but I think it's a very important one. And that is to seek the seek knowledge. And not just any knowledge, but seek the right knowledge. Because um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran that um, the earth and the sky, it is a miracle. And the, the night and the day, when they enter in together, it is also a miracle. But it's only for those with sound mind. Mm. So people with knowledge and people with a good mind, they are able to see that that is a miracle. Because a lot of people are asking, you know, like, um, where's the miracle? Like they want something to happen, then they will believe it. And this is actually already answered in the Quran. Like, if you have knowledge, you know what is the miracle. So seek the right knowledge um, to help you understand which religion is the true. It's the it's the true one, and. Also seek knowledge from the right place because there is also many misinformation out there. There's also many people that will deviate away from the teachings of Islam. So seek the right knowledge. I think that's the best advice I can give. Seek the right knowledge and don't go down the wrong path. Go to your local mosque, go to your convert center, seek the Ustad's help. Don't just get information from the internet because there's a whole jumble of fake and true news together. And, yeah. you know, if you do not have the ability or the way to decipher what is true and fake, you know, you might get lost in the flooding of information from the internet. Yep, correct. So, thanks for the advice, Brother Elias. So, for those who are out there, you know, if you have questions about Islam, feel free to drop us a DM on our IG. Mine is Harold Chia, H-E-R-A-L-D dot Chia. And his is uh, Elias. Hey, Elias. Is it Tuan Tan? Hey, hey Elias Tan. Yeah. Hey Elias Tan. So yeah, just drop us a DM. We may reply you slowly because you know we have a lot of either messages or things to do or so. Please, please be patient with us. Inshallah, God willing, we'll get the answers to you. For those who are out there who not yet know about Islam, we encourage you to find out more about it. Ask yourself about the purpose and meaning of life. There should be more to life than just living it on repeat. Yeah. Like waking up, going to work, earning the money and just going home. And repeating that life again. You know, death is going to come to every one of us. Mm-hmm. And if we believe that it just ends at death, then there's really no bright ending to life. Yeah, Does that make sense? 
it kind of makes no sense of why we are here. Yeah, correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because life just doesn't come and go like that, you know, it just yeah, has to there's have. to be a reason. Uh. Yeah. There's to be a reason. Everything happens for a reason. So do take some time, think about what you see around you, you observe how things are created around you, and then you will come to find that there's actually a creator who creates everything. So I encourage you to discover it through Islam because we believe that it is the true words of God that were being spoken in the Quran. Seek the Quran also for, for knowledge because it has everything there for you to understand about Islam as well. Mm. Apart from that, do find out more about our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Peace and blessings be upon him, his life and how he actually shared about Islam to the rest of the world. And it will inspire you further to you know come and see what an amazing person he is. He's so beloved to all the Muslims. So before we end today's video, we also like to share with you a surah from the Quran from each of us. Hopefully it will bring you some peace, some comfort and some knowledge that you know will be beneficial for you. So brother Ilas, what would be a surah from the Quran that you would like to share? I think the one that I want to share is Surah Al-Asr. I think a lot of scholars have said that this is um, what, like a summary of the Quran because it, it talks about like as time passes, um, mankind will be lost except those who are patient, those who guide others to the right path and those who um, do good deeds. Right. So um, like in a sense, if you look at the Quran, like it is one of these three things like asking us to be patient, um, asking us to be uh, do good deeds or asking us to find out the truth, like, go to the truth. That's why I like this um, surah. Huh? And the surah goes like this. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan yur rajim bismillahir rahman yur rahim wal asr innal insana la fi khusr illa alladina amanu amilu salihati wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bil sabr. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Sounds good. I think it's very profound the meaning, understanding about time and how we will eventually be lost if we don't seek knowledge and forget about, we end up forgetting about who is God and, and stuff. For me, I would like to share Surah Al-Ikhlas, which encapsulates the entire meaning of God in Islam. So here it goes. A'udhu billahi minash rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Qul huwa Allahu ahad Allahu samad lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad So basically what it means is that say that Allah is one and only the eternal the absolute he doesn't beget neither is he begotten so he doesn't give birth to and neither is he born um, and there's nothing can be compared to him yeah, so that is the gist of that surah. Thank you guys for tuning in today to watch our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channels if you enjoy what you're watching. Turn on your notifications if you'd like to see more of our videos and to be informed of our new uploads. Another thing we would like to share with you is Brother Elias and I have been discussing about collaborating. We'll still upload videos on our own personal YouTube channels based on the topics that we want to talk about. But we are thinking of coming together to do a podcast as well. And inshallah, it will go smoothly for us. And when that happens, we'll let you guys know. So the whole purpose of doing this podcast and all these videos is there are different groups of audience, some people to just listen to a podcast. And we hope that we can reach out more to people who want to know more about Islam. Yep, correct. So um, we'll, we'll keep you guys updated if there is anything because I think this is going to be a very exciting year. So yeah. 2021 is... Hopefully, inshallah, will be a, a good year for every one of us. Um, not just us, but also everyone that's watching this video. So to our dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we'd like to wish all of you Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And to everyone out there, we wish you have a beautiful day ahead. And inshallah, we hope to see all of you in Jannah paradise one day. Yep. Thank see you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.